Hi, Cozy Tea Timers. So today I've got something fancy because it's to celebrate the end of our second week of doing Cozy Tea Times. And so I thought I would celebrate. My friend, Sean, sent me this tea um, when he was in Paris. So Paris feels like a celebration. And I'm one of those people, as you can tell, this is another one of Jen's old shirts that wasn't quite as old when uh, she first gave it to me. And um, I don't know why shirts always get these holes right at where the, right around the belly button area. Like, is, is my belly button like so super powerful that it just jab, but it doesn't even stick out. It doesn't make sense. And neither does this conversation. Never mind. Back to the fancy tea. <laughs> Here we go. So, um, yeah, it's nothing to do with my belly button. I'm thinking it might be like the zipper from the pants or something. I don't know if anybody else has that problem. Okay, so this tea is from Paris. And so I thought that I would, oh, this is really dumb. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, so not the tea. The tea's not dumb, Sean. I really, I'm really excited about it. So I thought I always save, like my old clothes, I save fancy things. And what's the point? Like, they're to use, and we've got a pandemic, and I should drink the fancy tea rather than, mm, wow, I can smell it just from here, rather than just save it for some fancy time that never comes. And this is a fancy time because we've got, we've got uh, two weeks down, and wow, 300 of you have subscribed. Oh, so it's got a lid on it. Okay, I've got hot water there. <laughs> I never had a tea that had this kind of tin thing. I guess, you know, Parisians know how to do it. Okay. Oh, wow. Reminds me of those fancy nuts that people would have. Ooh, it's really fruity. Look at that. Ooh, that smells really nice. Okay, I've got one of these little thingies. And then I'll talk about something, not to worry. I'll, I'll uh... Oh, it smells super fruity. It's a black tea and it's, it's kind of floral too. It's really nice. If you had noticed, I'm sporting that very chic, fashionable wet look again. So we'll let this brew a little bit. And that smells really good. Okay, let's see, to a question while my tea brews. Um, let's see, let's see what we get. Oh, okay, here's one from Solaris. Um, it's a two-parter, but I can't go too long because I have a phone interview with some guy in England, Ben Ben Falk. He has a YouTube channel, so you guys could check it out. He, he does sustainable farming and everything, and I went to his site, and it made me feel real peaceful just to, um, just to look at it, so that's cool. He's an entertainment entertainment reporter, and he wants to talk to me about Jack Nicholson, which is always fun because Jack, it was really... Um, it was really cool working with Jack. So um, let's see. Oh, and I have to put makeup on today too. I'm doing a thing with an Australian romance group for my uh, romance suspense book. So that'll be cool today, but not cool putting on the makeup and um, figuring out what to do with my quarantine hair. Let's see, okay. So I was thinking I would do, uh, Solaris wanted to know how it was to see my younger self uh, captured on a celluloid. Okay, the first time I saw my younger self captured on celluloid, it was the biggest rush ever. So what happened is, I used to be a dancer in New York. I'm gonna take a sip of this. It feels weird not to have taken a sip already. It's not totally brewed yet, so I'll just work around this. Oh wow, that's really nice. Thanks, Sean. Um, if you're watching. So um, the first time, what had happened was I was a ballet dancer in New York and everybody was auditioning for this movie. And, um, you know, we were all hard up. I was working at Alexander's uh, department store, which was a discount department store uh, in the evenings after I finished my 10 hours of ballet. And luckily I had a full scholarship to dance. And so, um, then um, it's a money, you know, money, movies, that was supposed to be big bucks. Uh, so everybody was auditioning, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll go down and audition just because I was curious what, what it was like. And they had, it was a 
huge, huge thing. And then they'd have you do come across the stage and then they'd get rid of a whole bunch of people. And then they'd have a bunch of dancers come back again. And then after they got rid of some more people, then they would have you dance and everything. So anyway, they auditioned over 5,000 people and chose 56. And I was one of the dancers. So that was really cool. So I danced on fame and I guess I could talk about that. Um, but I'm supposed to talk about, um, Solaris's thing of what it was like. So I'll tell you some other time about what it was like shooting on that film. So anyway, then I hurt my back. I broke my back. So, um, I had to quit dancing. That's another story too. I'm leaping to the end of the, <laughs> the thing. So my, um, when I, I was, I had, to, I went to LA cause I thought, well, I can act. Um, so I went to LA and I was living with Jen and Jen said, Hey, your film uh, around a couple months into me being there or, or whatever, she said, your film's at the Cinerama Dome. And I was like, what's a Cinerama Dome? Oh, she said, Oh, it's a really fancy theater. It's, it's shaped like a dome. It's a big deal. And I said, Oh, so we decided we were going to go down and see it. So. We got dressed up and then we went down and when we approached and I was like, Oh, I wonder if anybody's going to see it. And I figured it's just like normal movie. You want to go see a movie, you go and you walk in. Well, when we got there, there was a line around the block, stretching around the block to get in the movie fame. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. And we were so excited. So I unrolled my window and, and it, in those days you didn't really have to wear your seatbelt. So I'm hanging on to the arm thing and I'm leaning up. Mm, that's nice. I'm leaning out of the car like this and I'm yelling, I'm in that movie. And I'm pointing at me and I'm standing up and my sister's honking the horn. And she had this old um, green Mustang that she'd gotten, our dad had gotten her second hand. And so it's like a real power muscle car which, when it's driving. But there's Jenny, you know, she's <laughs> like this sweet face thing. She has glasses that she'd only wear when she was driving, then she'd whip them off real fast. So she's got her glasses and she's driving and she's honking her horn. So we're going around the block and she's wah, 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 with the horn and I'm going, I'm in that movie. And we drove around the block and people looked at us and it was so exciting. And then we drove around the block around three or four times until people stopped looking at us and thought, oh, this is that crazy person. And so then we, parked the car and we got out and we got in line. We waited in line, waited in line and uh, it was really exciting. And then we got in and then the movie started and then there would be scenes. Like I told my sister beforehand, okay, I'm in the lunchroom scene. I'm in the stairway scene. I'm in the, I'm in the dancing scene, the audition scene. I'm in the classroom dance scene. I'm in the, I be, oh, I'm in the, um, I'm in the one where they have the jokes about, you know, where he's doing nightclub. So I told her all the different scenes that they'd called me in for to do. And every time I showed up, I'd be like, that's my hair. Cause I had really long hair, which it looks like I'm going to be having that by the time I get up quarantined, it's probably going to be down to my waist like it was then. So, um, so then my, I, I'd flash past the screen and there'd be my long hair whoosh, going past the screen and we'd be like, ah! Or there would be my, there would be me dancing and I'd be in the corner and I'd be lifting my leg up like this and we'd be like, ah! So we had so much fun seeing that film. And then we, we, when it was over and everybody went out, we said, let's watch it again. So then we sat down, got some more popcorn, soda pop and got ready and watched it again. So that was so much fun. So I was expecting that my next film I had was text and I had the lead, the female lead. So I was expecting that that was going to be so fun. So I was all prepared, go see the movie and I go and I'm horrified. I'm horrified because first of all, I was playing the character Jamie. So I expected it to look like Jamie and it was just me. It was just me and my big old face moving and going. And then I, um, I, I, the other thing is, is that it wasn't just me. It was me like magnified. So think how difficult it is. Sometimes somebody would be like, Oh, look at this picture of you. It's so cute. And you're looking like, ah, but you're glad it's only, you know, it's only like this big, but your face is, is 30 feet tall and wide. So every time you speak, your mouth goes, whoa, whoa. and everything that you don't like about the way you look is magnified a million times. So it was quite, quite shocking to see my younger celluloid self on the screen. 
it was really, really, really quite shocking. And, um, and I didn't get over that for many years. Um, oh, oh dear, I better go. I've got to do my interview. Okay, so um, bye Cozy Tea Time, Tea Timers, and I'll see you. Remember, I'm not doing on the weekend, so I'll see you on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.